So we've all heard those tidbits of financial advice, like don't buy your coffee, make it at home, or cut out the avocado toast if you want to buy a house. But this is advice that is relevant for today, or are there actually smarter solutions to saving? Wealth expert Shannon Lee Simmons is joining us to tell us more. Good to have you back on your morning. We enjoyed your last time that you were here. All right, budgeting solves all your money problems. Is this true? Okay, it's not like you can spend whatever you want. You have to have some limits somewhere, but what I'm talking about is those rigid budgets where you categorize your money into like 50 things, like gas, going out, clothes, takeout, coffee, and then inevitably you probably end up failing, staying within the confines of those rigid budgets, and that often leads to just giving up on budgeting altogether, and people say, you know, I'm bad with money, so why bother? Mm. So what I suggest is instead of having one of those rigid spreadsheets where you spend a whole Friday night setting it up, <laughs> um, instead just separate the money that you can and can't spend every single payday. So here's for my bills and savings, whatever's left over, no rules. I have this much money to blow to zero until the next payday. Hmm. I don't have to worry about whether it's groceries or takeout or a taxi. It's just this is what I have to live for the next two weeks. Uh, reducing your disposable income, does that help? Okay, so what it really is is more, I hate the term disposable income because if any part of your money is disposable, then you've got more than enough, right? Mm. So really what it is is a lot of times we hear those latte tips, you know, cut the lattes like yeah. you were saying. So what I suggest is who cares where you spend your money, you have to cut things somewhere. So think about your money, whatever gives you the best emotional bang for your buck, keep that. So if you have two people, one person really loves getting a morning coffee for $4, the other person really hates it, well only the person that hates it should be cutting the morning coffee, and the person that loves it should actually be reducing income or expenses somewhere else in order to make room to keep the coffee, because then they actually feel like they're enjoying their money rather than always feeling broke. So the message here I'm getting is set limits that you can stick to, but you don't necessarily have to title everything. Yes. All right. Do you still need a million dollars to retire? This is a savings that, that went around. I think it was a marketing scam. I know, or, I know. Not a marketing scam, but a marketing uh, campaign. Yeah, so if I had a nickel for every time someone said you need a million dollars to retire, I would have a million dollars in retirement myself. Um, I think that the answer to that question is some people do. Some people need four million dollars. Some people need 400,000. It really depends on who you are, what your lifestyle expectations are. So to answer that famous question of how much should I be saving for retirement, my answer is always the same whatever you can. I'd rather have someone save $100 a month and actually do it than be so intimidated mm. by the goal of saving $1,000 a month to get to some arbitrary number that they do nothing mm. because they feel like, what's the point? What about um, money and savings and investings? What's the new thought around that? Well, I think that, so we all want to make our money work for us. That's the mm -hmm. big thing. That's the big marketing line, too, is make your money work for you. But let's make sure that you have your emergency account on lockdown first. So a lot of people have guilt or fear if they have a pile of money sitting in a savings account doing nothing or mm -hmm. in their checking account. And yes, you want that money to be earning some interest, but what I don't love seeing is people freaking out, pulling all their money out of their emergency accounts to throw it in their RRSP, especially during RRSP season, to make their money work for them. Right. Then the furnace breaks and you have nothing on the sidelines and then you end up borrowing to bail yourself out of an emergency right. which causes a whole anxiety cycle so what I suggest is no debt then get your emergency savings on lockdown and then you start to do the fun stuff like investing in your RRSPs and TFSAs because that's way more fun what we love about having you here is you make money less scary <laughs> and more approachable for everybody good Thank to have you, you back with us thanks